I just put fresh batteries in my mouse, <clears throat> my, my wireless mouse. Yeah. Um, got myself a glass of tea. Feel good about that. Getting ready for bed because in the eight and a half hours, I've got a, a conference call. So I want to get up before that and have a cup of coffee and wake my ass up. Anyway, um, yeah. Oh, and I just ate some Samoas. Thank you. <laughs> just had some Samoas. Girl Scout cookies are bomb. They're so awesome. Uh, gosh, I don't know what I was thinking. I had I, a lot of shit going through my brain. So, um, oh, I bought my mom a present. I got her a uh, little 2.1 sound system for her computer. And I replaced her little 19-inch monitor with my 23-point-something monitor, which is a widescreen. Better for her eyes. And when she's at her little workstation, hanging out in the basement smoking, because we don't smoke upstairs. Um, <laughs> she can watch things on and, and hear them and stuff like that. It's pretty neat. Anyway, I just felt like it and, and feel, felt like doing that for her. Um, you know, I've been forgetting a lot of the, the little topics that run through my head during the day when I have a moment and I go, ah, oh, you're going to do your journal tonight. What are you going to, what are you going to talk about? Um, feeding people. I think the Samoas brought that up because they were a gift. Uh, feeding people. It's one of the nicest things you can do. Um, a lot of cultures uh, throughout history, and and even you know modern ones, um, it's a really huge statement to uh, to feed someone, to give them food, um, to enter the, to have them enter your home. There's there's a lot of just just having them do that. You know, there's, there's a lot of cultural differences through different societies, um, different religions, different beliefs, different parts of the world. There's a ton of, of varied... I mean, there's a lot of places where what you think is cool here in America it would have a complete opposite uh, uh, meaning and could be very offensive. So, wow. Lots of smoke. Anyway, um... So, the, the, but the one thing I think um, is probably universal is feeding people, offering them food, uh, giving them sustenance. Uh, it, it offer it allows the opportunity to give something that is a basic necessity. I've worked in retail most of my whole life, and most of the stuff I've sold is pretty unnecessary. You, you definitely wouldn't need it on a desert island. Uh, you don't need it in a lot of places. So, one thing that I've always known about that is because, uh, to be appreciative of your customers, because if you're not selling food, medicine, or shelter, most of the rest of that is optional. I mean, you get right down to it. I mean... Obviously, in modern society, electricity, um, your infotainment system, uh, your connection to the interwebs, uh, your your cellular phone, which is very quickly becoming kind of a necessity. But it's not food, it's not shelter, and it's not medicine. And these are the big three that generally life-sustaining. Food, I think, universally is something that gives you, that affords you the opportunity to express to someone that you care enough about them to give them something that will nourish their body. 
I like to cook. I do. I, I enjoy cooking. Some of my friends go way on one end of that, where they just the cooking is oh is is their life. Other people could care less. Eat ramen and go out for dinner, whatever. Food, food, whatever. Who cares? Uh, I'm I'm kind of in between, but I do respect it. I respect it as as a cultural linchpin that holds people together, that <clears throat> binds a society, food, food nowadays, the, the, well, and let's go to the, to the big F, not the little F, food nowadays, crops, and animals for the you know, carnivores, which of which I am. It's mostly factory farming. Um, that kind of, that's, that's one of the first places where a significant amount of manual labor has been removed. Jobs have disappeared because you've got these massive collection devices for food the big f you know corn wheat the clothing we wear uh, the cotton um but there's the mechanized and industrialized nature of food gathering for the masses has eliminated a significant amount of jobs and in a lot of ways it's almost completely automated almost there's usually when these you've got these big collection devices or these big threshers or whatever there's one guy and he's doing the job of like 40 people and he's doing it faster and more efficiently definitely more uh, economically you know uh, saving a ton of money for the farmer um, That being said, I just recently saw a statistic, true or not, I mean, it's not a, it's, it would not surprise me if it's true, that 85 people hold as much wealth as the next 3.5 billion. Like I say, I don't know if it's true or not. I don't, I don't know where the factoid came from. I haven't fact-checked it. But let's think about that. With the mechanization, the automation, and the phenomenal surge in robotics that's coming, they estimate that 50% of the manual labor jobs in the world could be gone by 2020. That's six years. What do you think is going to happen when 50% of those 3.5 billion people are out of work and 85 people hold the other half of the economy. I think in pop culture references, it's going to be time for a Tyler Durden or, I don't know, Guy Fawkes um, or something. Some, there's going to be some type of revolution. If you've got, you know, uh, 1.75 billion people who are not gainfully employed. The, it's a welfare state beyond comprehension. And when you've got 85 people holding the reins of the planet, the seeds are sown at that point. for a mass revolution and redistribution of wealth. Um, 
part of me wants to see it because I hate inequality and in income inequality of that scale is going to be the issue of the next few years. Hold on to your hats, kids. Anyway, that's the stuff that was on my mind today. Be good to each other. Good night.